Hi, Tessie. Good to see you. Hi, Dirk. How are you? Very good. It's been a little while. It has been too long, my dear friend. So, so Tessie, what are you up to? What's, um, I, I, if, if I may, just briefly, I'd, uh, we invited you to TEDx Luxembourg City because uh, everybody has wanted to hear from you. And you were, you were gracious enough to accept at long last because I know many other people have asked you to do a TED Talk. Um, and so it was <laughs> lovely that you came to do a TEDx uh, at Luxembourg City. Um, so thanks for doing that. And that was back in June, almost a year ago. I know. Um, and uh, sorry, that was in, in December, excuse me, it was the TEDx Women. December, yeah, June I was supposed to, and then it didn't work out. Uh, it, precisely. Then we said December, exactly. So, uh, so it was wonderful, and I, I'd certainly recommend everybody go and uh, listen to your Three Pillars uh, talk. Three Pillars of Magic! Absolutely, it was really, really wonderful. But so, I guess, for a little, to give a little bit of background as well, what, what's, for those who haven't seen your talk, who I'm sure will, but what is it that you do on a typical day? So what, what, is, what is the life of Tessie? What does that look like? Well, I think I will break it up into two, then, the life pre-corona and the life corona now. Yes. I think because both are very different, very exciting. Both have a lot of opportunities. Both have some stress, but they're very, very different. As each and every one of you who will listen to this and see this will understand in their own ways. So, um, so pre-corona, uh, I was, um, well, a very, very busy businesswoman and mother and philanthropist. So I was traveling quite a lot for my company, Finding Butterflies Consulting, which brought me more and more to Luxembourg, which I love. And I will definitely resume that again when we can travel again, um, which was all about um, female empowerment and educational projects in STEAM or in uh, impact projects, uh, CSR, so corporate social responsibility, and all of these amazing new um, domains that are coming up more and more into big corporates. So that was finding butterflies and I tried and I traveled quite a lot for that. Uh, the same for Professor Borders, my foundation, which works in eight countries around the world, which I'm so proud of. My whole team, they're just incredible people and everyone is doing it for free. So the whole work is just phenomenal. We're really changing hundreds of people's life, but it's all on a shoestring budget. So I'm very proud of that. And that as well, um, doing Corona, I will get into that as well, how that has affected also my foundation. And other than that, obviously a soccer mom. My kids are very busy. They're two teenagers now. They have their own lives as well, um, living separately as well with my ex-husband. So there's a lot of logistics between parents and, and individuals. And so and there's all of these new skills that I have learned and, and mastered over the last few years, uh, which I'm very, very happy about because I think it's so important to uh, focus your time on things that are worth your time and make it right. So that comes into my business, my foundation and my private life. Mm -hmm. And all three have kept me incredibly busy during pre-corona times, which, yeah, was just always so exciting. Now moving fast forward then, I guess, to the corona times. Um, I think corona times, uh, as a lot of you will definitely relate, has put not just a lockdown, a physical lockdown on us, but also has literally stopped us from just moving around like a headless chicken, uh, me included. So uh, it just really forced me as well to reconsider, um, for example, meetings, I would have flown to Luxembourg or to Belgium or to the US even for two days. These meetings where I say now, oh, I could have done them over Zoom like this. It's just to reevaluate how precious time is really time and effort and how important f real focus really is um, and uh, obviously for me one of the biggest learnings during corona time because my company is as a lot of other entrepreneurs will understand not doing so well um, we'll see how it picks up i keep positive with it but it's just to say you know if you can't travel with my company then you can't have proper clients i have a few but most of them I can't because I can't speak at conferences. I'm a, I'm a paid speaker. And so new Dirk will understand that. And if you can't do that, then, you know, your bread and butter is just not as it was before. So I was thinking, hmm, if that will happen again, a Corona crisis or any other viral um, crisis in the future, because they say that pandemics will come more and more, which I do agree. Um, 
because the world is kind of like fighting back a little bit to what has has been done to it over the last centuries um, and decades. Think, just on that note, because I, I see you're outside and it's it's yeah. just beautiful outside, but it's amazing what a knock-on effect. You say you fly everywhere and I know I take my car all over the place. Um, yeah. Now that we're doing these virtual meetings, it's incredible and maybe it's slightly coincidental how beautiful it's been outside over the last, you know, however many weeks. But, uh, there, there was a lot of joy. Like, yeah, there was a lot of jokes about it in the UK actually, because I'm obviously not in the UK. I decided to come to Switzerland um, just because five weeks ago I took the decision to take my kids out of Switzerland, and I was fortunate enough to say I'm staying with family in Switzerland that I could do that. Um, but uh, that said, uh, now in the UK, as it is always raining, people said now the weather is so great. So there's all of these things going around on WhatsApp where you see no corona and it's raining rain, like like raining raining rain and then now corona it's just like 25 degrees it's just such nice weather it's really it's it's a very funny it's a very funny situation yes well i think it's really indicative of of how our very hectic lives hustle and bustle is is creating this when you look at satellite photos and and how the air is just cleared up mm. uh, and there is, there's some great memes going around about, you know, if you can't deal with the environmental impact, well, here, have a virus to go and practice. You know, you're clearly capable of doing it as a human race. So, But, uh, but listen, if, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd quickly like to pop back. You were talking about Professors Without Borders. And, and as a teacher, as a, as a university teacher, I was, obviously, it's something that I'm absolutely fascinated with. But how how is that working now? Is it has it just stopped? Because I know you would send professors to to countries where the, that level, really high level of education. I know the professors you work with are amazing people. Yeah. That high level of education is necessary. How is that working now? Has that all just stopped at the moment? Um, no, it hasn't. So uh, our our summer schools, it's summer schools, so they only start during the summer. So that that is. Well, we're lucky for the moment because our, our teachers are not deployed yet. What happens now at the moment, so what we're doing as we're doing every year, at this moment in time until June is all of the logistics is being done. So um, I'm doing recruitment with Caroline. We're doing all of the legal stuff, the contracts of the teachers, uh, the work on the ground. So we are talking with the different summer schools. So there are different partners in the different locations. Um, what needs to be done. We're talking to carrier for the plane tickets, what we agree on that. So all of the logistics is being done at the moment and that has not changed to any other year since four years. This is a procedure always. Mm -hmm. um, what we're now considering, um, just because we don't know what will happen in July and August, which is when most of our teachers are being deployed, is that uh, we have two scenarios that we are already discussing. So we had quite a few board calls with our trustees um, which are from all over the world, where we said, okay, scenario one, it goes ahead. Okay, what if there's an outbreak while our teachers are deployed? So that's scenario one, but if we do go ahead. So we, we talked about that. Scenario two, in June, there will be a second wave of COVID-19, as some people predict, and even the European Commission has said officially, please do not schedule any holiday plans for this summer. So maybe they know something we do not know, or maybe they just take precaution and actually think about, well, once they open the borders now, we're talking about herd immunity, which is only at the moment 0.2%. And the scientists from Imperial and from other universities have said there needs to be at least 70% of people who have it, and they say they will get it. And we're at 0.2%. I think if people do the math, we're far from 70%. And I think so there will be a spike again as well. That is my personal opinion as well, that in June it will spike again and it will be quite uh, uh, disruptive again. And so that is the scenario when we're not doing it then. So we are thinking about doing more as well online where we help the students, where we can teach them online or work with our partners at that, or actually just do some of the backend work we wanted to do since a long time, work on our website, um, take more time to recruit our interns, uh, see what can we do else, what can we offer else. So we also offered now um, some, uh, some calls, uh, Zoom calls, where you can teach on uh, CV building, um, how to write a, a book review, and all of these other things which are also fun, kind of like online learning, because I think uh, as a lot of people say it, and I myself am doing that as well, 
I think online learning is really the the thing at the moment, you know, because what do you do when you sit home all the time? It's just so amazing that you have all of these online courses for free. And so Professor Sudha Portis, we're also working within that. So we have done quite a few posts. If you go on our website or our social media, you find all of that. Um, so we're just trying to also innovate. I think as, as Schumpeter famously said, um, you know, he talked about creative destructive, destruction. And I think this is what is happening. You know, it's the creation on the myths of the destruction, right? The, the rising phoenix of, of, uh, of from, from bad stuff into what can be better, right? Mm -hmm. Because we obviously all people who are very innovative, very modern and, um, and yeah, it's, it's just a good opportunity to think out of the box. I, I, th I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, they say also necessity is the mother in of invention, but uh, the universities that I work with, they, they typically very, very slow to do any kind of change. And we have the very traditional lectures where students come into a room and a teacher teaches but it's incredible they're all moving online um slowly but surely and again they have no choice so uh but th tell me you mentioned uh, you're doing online learning what what uh, what are you studying right now oh i had that crazy idea one night let me put it like that literally crazy idea i have studied medical before and it was always my dream when i met my ex-husband for example i was a nurse in the military which you obviously will find out all in my ted talk <laughs> but uh, tedx talk but um the thing was i always wanted to resume it and finish it because i think the medical field is just such an innovative and inspiring field and i love helping people and i think what is better to help people than with their health people will always get sick and um and i really think that that is a little bit of my calling as well. And so uh, I signed up in an American university online for an integrative medicine doctorate and a PhD. Um, so they do both doctorate, which is all of the studies. So I'm working on my coursework at the moment mm -hmm. around 10 hours a day. And it will take me around two years to do all of that. And then after a year and a half, I will include my PhD within the studies as well, which my PhD, I'm not sure yet, but I might uh, focus that on psychedelics and how you can use psychedelics for um, PTSD and other trauma um, alleviation. Um, because I think nowadays there's a lot, everyone talks about PTSD and trauma and anxiety and depression. And I think the studies that have been done uh, also by Imperial College in London, which a good friend is leading that psychedelics department, it really shows that there can be a difference. Um, you know, obviously when people hear psychedelics, um, people who do not know about it, they say, oh, it's drugs. No, it's not. It's, it's actually, it's, it's herbs. It's natural medicine, as they say. And yes, of course, you can do bad with everything, but if you use it right and in a medical way, uh, it can actually help a lot. And uh, so a lot of people in the military, for example, have been tested on with psychedelics and within a session or two have been completely healed. Um, so it's, it's really incredible in Amsterdam as well. And in the US, there's quite a few research centers who have worked with that. And I think to myself, you know, me having had a burnout myself and, and just, you know, just being a mother and seeing everything that is going around in the world and, and, and seeing my friends and my work colleagues and stress building up for everyone, I think that could be really a field of study which will blossom specifically also after COVID-19 because I think um, depression and anxieties and, and anger and all of these other not so good side effects of lockdown are also coming out now more and more. And I think we just need to be prepared for the future if this ever happens again, that we do have all of these new domains ready to go um, to accommodate the needs of a modern society who is under lockdown because of viruses like that. Yeah. So you, you starting to study this, is this something you began again when, or you, you continued as soon as the, the lockdown started? Is this you taking the initiative? Because I can't imagine you had time prior to this to, to do any kind of additional studying. No, it's true. It's me taking the initiative. Because I thought to myself, um, well, we're home now anyways, and uh, what to do better here if my kids need to study, because they, I'm homeschooling them as well. And I can tell you from 
from my experience, it's not one of my favorite things to homeschool my kids. It's actually really difficult, but we're getting through with it. But then also during the holidays now, for example, they are working as well. This weekend they didn't, on weekends we don't work, but during the week, even though it's Easter holiday, I make them work three to four hours a day. We agreed on that. And the reason being is because they are very weak in, uh, in math and, and reading at the moment. And so I can't then sit there and not study. So then I'm with them in the boat and I said, okay, you're doing that. I'm doing it. We're a family. We're doing this together so that we're all coming out of this crisis in a better way. And uh, they agreed with that. And, and that's why. And yes, how will it be after COVID-19? Me resuming while finishing my studies, then it, I still will have at least two years to go. It's just, yeah, I will need to, to juggle even more than, but I think a lot of other moms and dads do that too. When they study overnight, as I did already with my master's and my bachelor, I was already a mom, I was already working. I know what it feels like. And yes, I know what it feels like not sleeping at night or on the weekends working. And that's fine because I think when you're focused, you see the end of the line as well. And that is where I wanna go. And as my father always says, from nothing comes nothing. So if we don't invest into something, if we don't invest in ourselves, then don't blame anyone else if you're not getting where you want to be. Um, then it's your fault. And so, um, yeah, I'm trying to do that. And I'm hoping with positivity and just determination that I will get there. Oh, I, I'm sure you will. You've, you've really <laughs> succeeded an awful lot of, uh, of what you're doing. And, and the things you've done are absolutely inspirational. So I, I guess on that note then, um, just, just finally, is there something that you would like to tell the, the Luxembourgish audience that are going to be watching this and uh, the Luxembourgish, the greater region and, and potentially the, the global network of TED fans that, that might see this? Is there, is there a message that you want to send out there from, for this period where people are at home and they're discovering new things online? Um, what, what would you like to tell people? I think it's about, you know, yes, COVID-19 is happening. It has happened. We're at home. We cannot change that, uh, but we can change the way we react to it. And that meaning, you know, look towards you a little bit more. Look inside you a little bit more. Who are you right now? Where are you right now? You have given, you have been given that incredible opportunity from nature to just spend time with you just to see what have I been doing? Is this still what I wanna do? Does this make me happy? And if not, what can I do? Which action plan can I put in place to become a better person tomorrow? And I think that is beautiful. Also to reconnect to people that, that you haven't been reconnecting since so long, you know, just pick up that phone. We are blessed with modern technologies. There have been pandemics in other centuries before. They didn't have that, what we are having right now, Zoom calls, phone, house party, WhatsApp, all of these things. Just pick up the phone and actually take the time to talk to people you haven't been talked to for so long. Connection, that's where magic happens. I truly believe in that. And I think it's just, yeah, because now you have the time to do that, you know? There's no train waiting for you. You're not needing to run to a meeting. You don't need to finish a deadline. You might, but not as much as before. So you have automatically more time now to really invest in what you actually want to invest it in. And what can that be better than people you think are important to you? So um, that would be definitely my message to everyone out there. And uh, yeah, just to stick together, be together in a community, look out for people, especially the ones who are vulnerable, elderly people, don't forget about them. Young people as well who are in distress. There's a lot of young people out there who don't have family, who are alone as well. And I think it's just about, you know, how can we help one another by, by yes, having a wall between us, but you know, love transcends walls. Yeah, unity transcends worlds. It's just there's so many opportunities we can take now to make our world more meaningful for everyone in it. It's something you're clearly very passionate about. And, and I think for, for those who haven't seen it, that was a sneak glimpse into what your TED talk sounded like as well. <laughs> like the power of connections. It's, uh, it was really something that, uh, that really um, emotionally touched people um, at the talk. So, so absolutely fantastic. Tessie, I haven't seen you take a uh, take a drink of coffee. I hope you have your uh, your cup with yes, you. Yes, I do. 
Oh, oh Mr. Clever, very good. <laughs> yes. It's so, my uh, son's cup and I stole it from him because oh, I like it so much. <laughs> Leslie, listen, thank you for, for TEDx Luxembourg City Presents Coffee With, in this case, Tessie. Um, thanks for doing this. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Talk to you very soon. Big kiss to everyone. Bye. All the best.